The mole is not so scary to understand once you realize that we have a lot of words in the English language that represent a number. So for example, one pair or a pair is two, a dozen is 12, a gross is 144, and a ream, for example, a ream of paper means you have 500 sheets. Well, a mole is the same thing. A mole is just 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. It's also known as Avogadro's number. And the reason why this number exists is because atoms are so small and they're so vast, there's so many atoms out there, that you need a number like the mole to quantify atoms. So just how big is a mole? If you had a mole of marshmallows, it would cover the United States to a depth of 600 miles. If you had a mole of hockey pucks, it would equal the mass of the moon. And if you had a mole of rice grains, it would occupy a cube 120 miles on each edge. Before I start explaining the mole and how it's used in chemistry, you have to get familiar with the idea of mass versus quantity. So basically, how heavy is something versus how many are there. So just use bananas as an example. If you have one pound of bananas, within that one pound bunch, you would have five bananas. If you had two pounds of the same bunch, you would have 10 bananas. And if you had a five pound bunch of bananas, then you would have 25 in total. And if you had 10 pounds, without even counting how many bananas are in that bunch, you can actually do the math in your head and you would tell me there are 50 bananas. So we can extend this idea of how heavy versus how many from the bananas straight to chemistry. So in chemistry, instead of using dozen, instead of using ream or gross or pairs, we use the mole to count atoms because atoms are so small and there's so many of them. So we're gonna extend this idea of how heavy versus how many just by looking at one mole samples of just various elements. Now, with the help of the periodic table, you can actually find the molar mass of any element. So let's just take carbon for example. So if I have 12 grams of carbon, that means how heavy, I can find out how many atoms of carbon I have and it turns out I have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. And that by the way is one mole of carbon. If I look at iron for example, if I have 55.85 grams of iron, that means I have one mole of iron and I have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of iron. So it's this idea that we can relate mass to quantity. How heavy is something? 12 grams. How many are there? 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. And the common factor in all this is that you're looking at just one mole samples for each of these elements pictured. They're all one mole, which means they're all 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd for the quantity, but their masses might be slightly different. If this idea of mass versus quantity, how heavy versus how many is still giving you trouble, just think of it in simple terms like bricks and feathers. So for example, if I have 12 bricks, that means I have a dozen bricks, and a dozen bricks might weigh 100 kilograms. On the other hand, if I have 12 feathers, I still have a dozen feathers, but the mass might be way less. It might be like 0 0.001 kilograms. So the point is the masses might be different, but the quantities are still the same and they're united by a single unit. Uh, in this case, it's the dozen. But in chemistry, we're gonna use the mole. Well, the mole might apply to atoms and elements, but you can actually have a mole of anything. For example, you can have a mole of bricks. So if I had 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd bricks, that means I have one mole of bricks and it would be a very large mass. Likewise, I could still have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd feathers, which means I would have one mole of feathers, and it would still come out to a very large mass, but maybe not as much as the bricks. If you measure out 18 milliliters of water, remember the density of water is one, that means you have 18 grams of water, and 18 grams of water is one mole of water, which is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules. Now, I get all these numbers from the periodic table. So when I look at the formula for water, it's H2O, I know there are two hydrogens, each weighing 1.01 .01 a piece, and I add that to 16, which is the mass of oxygen. So again, the periodic tables will have all the molar masses for you. 
So when I add 2 plus 16, I'm going to get around 18 grams per mole for water. For sodium chloride, the formula is NaCl. So the mass of sodium is 22.99, and we're going to add that to the mass of chlorine, which is 35.45, giving us 58.44 grams per mole for the molar mass of sodium chloride. So how heavy is it? 58 grams. We've got one mole of salt, which means how many, and how many is 6.02 times 10 to the 23 molecules. So again, in this example, these are both one mole samples of water and salt, which means they both have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules. But when you look at their masses, they're slightly different because again, they're different things and they're composed of different elements. So in short summary, the mole is just a really, really big number and that number is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Technically, you can have a mole of anything, but it is used in chemistry because atoms are so small and there's so many of them that you need the unit like the mole to help count or quantify the number of atoms that you have. The mole in chemistry can easily be understood with the concept of how heavy versus how many. So if you apply this to just simple things like bananas, for example, if I know that one pound of bananas will have five bananas in it, that means without even counting, if you handed me a bag of bananas that weighed 1,235 pounds, without even counting the individual bananas inside that bag, I can have some estimate and a very accurate estimate of how many bananas are in that bag without counting, without even opening the bag, I can calculate that. So that's what we're actually doing in part two, where we know how heavy our sample of the atom might be, so, for example, if you're given like 100 grams of water, you're asked to calculate how many molecules or how many atoms of H2O are in that sample. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time on Wind Chemistry.